Hey everybody and welcome to uh, this week's Design Cinema. This is Feng Zhu speaking. Uh, this is going to be a pretty quick episode uh, because I'm actually quite busy this week but I thought I'll do a quick uh, demo for you guys. This is a uh, in real time about an hour and a half painting of this giant bug. So what you're catching here is I started sketching it already and decided just to uh, record it. Um, it's going to be a kind of silly painting, just a giant fat bug sitting around. Uh, sort of. I started this as just a bug but then eventually I turned it into a, a sort of an Alex in Wonderland inspired thing where the guy is smoking. And uh, I'll explain why I put the cigarette in his hand, uh, mostly for scale reasons. But anyways, we start with a um, simple sketch. This obviously has been sped up from an hour and a half down to uh, 20 minutes for YouTube. Um, but please watch in HD full screen so you guys can see all the, uh, all the details and such. So we started sketching. Uh, this is quite simple. And on the left, you can see all the bug references. It's always good to kind of have your references next to you. This is done on my laptop, so I don't have a second screen available. But uh, if you have a second screen at home, you can always throw all your reference materials onto that uh, monitor because it helps to keep your your mental state in the same world, right? So if you're gonna draw giant bugs, then have these kind of images next to you to just remind yourself what you're drawing and also to get some detailed cues for forms and shapes and proportions. So this drawing here is coming together fairly quick, just a fat, lazy bug sitting under some, uh, some branches and those kind of things. Um, I didn't actually have any kind of planning going to this painting. Um, it just started sketching and just see where it goes. Um, typically, I plan these a little bit more, I guess, in my head. Uh, at least think about what I'm going to draw. This one literally just started completely blank uh, without any kind of thing. And sometimes you get good, good, uh, get good results doing this. Uh, so quick painting, and then just fill in the background to get some value. And then we're going to lay in some uh, values. So now this one's an interesting technique. This is a quick method. Basically, see the bug picture on the right, I mean, on the left there. Just copy and paste that in. Just use the colors directly. This is very, very quick. So this way you don't have to blend your own colors or anything like that. Just just use it, right? So I literally don't, who cares about where the photos are? It they they doesn't really matter where you place it, right? This is not being used as a texture, but more as a, just a direct um, usage of the values and colors found in their photos. So we could capture the kind of that bug feel uh, without having to eyeball the colors. All right, so it's kind of like a mix between uh, last, you know, those kind of raw paintings and using textures to start it off. They're kind of like a 50-50 mix. So in digital painting, especially in what we do in our world of design, it, the, the process actually doesn't really matter at all. So you can actually have a library full of texture uh, or swatch uh, samples that you get from good photographs and use those during your paintings. So the method really isn't the thing. It's more about the painting itself and the design. So you can see that the, the picture that we put in there is already gone. It uh, disappears very, very quickly. So it has nothing to do with, it, with the uh, actual content, just purely as a color cue. So here I kind of even used a mosquito uh, uh, abdomen area, the kind of butt area. It's kind of nice kind of red tone to it. So I threw a couple of that in there. I turn the line drawn off here uh, once in a while just to check to make sure that the forms are starting to read, right? The most important thing here is defining form. So you need uh, the minimum level of values to turn the form. So this guy is mostly a bunch of cylinders, right? His arms, his head, his body are just fat cylinders. So he's got to render the, the main light source and then the bounce light and then the core. So by defining those three areas, then he's going to read as a round form. Um, I introduced a little bit of green here, just to some background noise. So he's not sitting in some kind of void, but uh, something that has a little bit of perspective, some kind of depth, by building a level of dark medium to light. So here the line drawing is still pretty dependent on it. Uh, normally I get rid of the line drawing very, very quickly. But in this case, in this case because this guy's got some interesting interesting design elements like his legs and hand and head, uh, I need to see where those forms are before I get rid of them. Uh, in terms of line drawing itself, so I do keep it on. But normally, if you see watch the other demos, you see that the line drawing actually disappears rather quickly. Because in a painting, I don't want the line to distract me from from the actual paint, right? I don't want to depend on the line to hold the form. You got to make sure that the paint is holding the form. Uh, there, I open up a little navigator window, which is great in Photoshop because it allows you to kind of see stuff small. So as I paint this, I'm actually checking the navigator, not the big screen or the main image, just to see is the lighting starting to work. The light's supposed to come from sort of the left side of the screen. And how the shadow side, uh, which I'm painting right now, on the uh, right side, right? So the black lines are very distracting, so I got distracting, so I got to turn those off to, uh, to check. But you can see by looking at the thumbnail, the form is starting to read, the overall form of 
pretty much a giant cylinder, right? And that's what I was talking about earlier, that once you understand the, the foundations of basic forms, you're not rendering a bug. This is not a bug or a character or a machine or anything like that. It's just forms. So by rendering forms, it, it kind of just makes the painting happen on its own. Right? So, because we've been doing a lot of mechanical stuff uh, recently, right? Some mech stuff. So I thought I'll, I'll soften it up. But again, the content or the subject matter really doesn't matter much in terms of how to paint or how to render. It's just about the understanding of what forms and shapes makes up a, a object. So this bug or a mech, essentially they're the same kind of thing. The, the thinking behind it is actually uh, exactly mirror images, right? The, the content um, shouldn't really affect the way you learn how to paint. It's, about, it's all about the forms and the light. So here I'm just continuing to find the forms, right? I tried some stuff in the background. I was going to throw some of house back there, but it kind of looked fu funny, so I deleted it. Uh, Photoshop is great. It allows you to do these changes on the go. You know, it's your design at the end. Just because you started with a line drawing, it doesn't mean you have to stick with this. So, and you'll see me change the actual face of this bug uh, towards the end of the video because I just didn't like the way it looked, and we changed it. And that's the cool benefit of working digital. It gives you this kind of freedom. Here I'm adding some black patterns in here. Some uh, he's got these little kind of legs on his stomach, and also I'm, I want to work that black pattern into his design, uh, because if you look at the images on the left of the bugs, you notice the overall color is kind of this brown, red, yellow, black. The black plays a pretty important role in in defining these little insects. Like you look at the mosquito's back or the little termite's uh, head with the jaw areas. There's kind of these black gradients, which is great. So I want to add that into this image as well. Earlier, I used the black and white uh, layer to just adjust the um, values to make sure that our light source actually is a light source. So again, watch the other videos for some of this, um, but to explain it in a very simple term, uh, you know, if you look at the color yellow, for example, it could be a dark or a light value depending on where uh, the context of your painting, right? So sometimes what you think is light, but if you turn to black and white, it might not be a light source at all. It might be the same value as the object uh, that doesn't have light, for example, right? So you cannot use color sometimes to separate. It, it, it tricks the eye. So black and white allows you to check true light right, to see if, if the value, uh, who cares about the color, but the value of it is lighter than the, say, surrounding objects, right? therefore giving you a light source. Because so by simply separating things by color, sometimes you turn to black and white and all the lighting information goes away because color by itself uh, next to each other, for example, a blue and a red, they can essentially have this exact same value even though they're different colors. So black and white sort of gets rid of that. So here I'm starting to get into details. The overall thing is done. So that took about you know about half an hour or so to to knock down the overall shapes. And once you have that, then it becomes the again the easier thing now, which is just adding details. This is the part where um, you, your the confidence level goes way higher because the overall painting has been uh, established. And also at this point, you can show it uh, to to especially if you're working in house um, to to your employees. If you're an art director, for example, you can already get this across to your junior designers uh, to tell them what to work on. Or or if you are a uh, designer and you have an art director to report to, then at this point you could also show what you are working on. So efficiency, uh, as you guys have seen in the, all, the, all the videos, there's a certain pipeline production uh, method to the way I work, is simply because that's the that's the world that we uh, we live in. I mean, working, right? It's never about the illustration. It's about can you do it in a very fast uh, time. Okay, so here is the uh, the little hands got these two little claws coming out from the side of his body. So define those a little bit. Now the highlights in this case, uh, some of it's fake a little bit, right? In, essentially, there's only one light source here, or or just a few. But we want to use a little bit of highlights here and there. So uh, each highlight means another light source. So in overall, though, I'm trying to emulate the light coming from the left. But if you examine, for example, the uh, lights on his running on his arm, a little bit there, it's actually coming from almost where the camera would be. Right, for that light to hit. Uh, so we're cheating slightly with the light. But that's to done to show off the design, to make sure he really looks slippery like a bug. Yeah. Now, bounce light, there's some coming from the upper right, from that green kind of behind him, and also from the floor itself. So balancing light, balancing the, uh, the overall value by putting volumetric fog, because the few shapes I want to make sure that pops out in this painting are his head and his arm, the front one facing camera. Those two must read. And same with the antenna, actually, which is part of the head. The first antenna, the one closest to camera, must be in front of the other one. 